Cool. And I'm very funny. So this is the uh, sense doing call for Monday, February 20th, 2023. I was just about to report that I was just trying to reset my brain to where we were last week. We had a really juicy, productive call, but I don't remember what we left as the trail of things to do. And Bentley, you've created a doc, which is probably where we should go. Uh, if you want to screen share it or post the link to the chat, or if you want us to, if we should start someplace else, that would be good. There we go. Yeah, no, this is this is good. Um, so these and these are just ideas. We didn't, um, um, and just for people that are looking, we have a single agenda document. Uh, so the top part is things that we put in for them. But this meeting, here's just some stuff we did last meeting, and then a link to previous meetings, just so the document doesn't get too big and slow. And then here's a potential parking lot of things we discussed that we may want to just chat about later. Um, <clears throat> that should work. That sounds great. Thank you. Um, any comments, yeah. questions? Sorry, go ahead, Bentley. You go. You're okay. Um, any comments, questions, or afterthoughts from last week's call? The only comment I'll make is what I said before everybody was on the call, that I added something to Bentley's document, which was things like possible. I don't see it on here. Can you scroll a little bit down where you put like where you had that chart of artifacts that you'd like to come out of the calls? I think it's also also linked on this page. It's a spreadsheet link. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, this one. Yeah. yeah. This, so yeah, this was the the potential outcomes. Right. So I just added something to the bottom, Bentley, and I shared that we had a short little interview. So I wanted you to see that. Cool. Thank you. Glad to see where you where you edit stuff. Um, Joanne, thanks for joining us again. Um, uh, and and I'm aware that we should use your time wisely. Uh, so Bentley, um, um, Jerry, if I may, yeah, um, or Joanne, you can. Um, Peter does these calls all the time, and I never know what the heck he's doing, and so I feel like I'm learning what you guys do when you're talking about stuff talking about stuff yeah so i feel like i'm learning so she's here a little bit more as a participant and a little bit less as a subject matter expert unless you want her to switch hats so don't Fabulous. worry okay good i because i was a little concerned and that allays my fears and does no. that mean it's, does that mean it's okay to teach joanne the secret handshake and the initiation rituals yeah <laughs> and vice versa she's going to show us uh, some secret initiation rituals no we don't have, yeah we actually do kind of have a secret handshake with our hand signals um which i don't know if, if I, I won't uh, tell you her feedback on that Maybe she, <laughs> really uh, too bad i'm not used to it she she joy jerry she loves the red and green cards i love the way she yeah. said it really yeah. Uh, so the day, the day when Occupy happened, and in an instant, I realized, oh my God, everybody's carrying green cards and red cards. My life was made better. I was like, oh, I can teach this anytime. I don't have to make or ship plastic cards. But you love the, but you like the cards. I like the cards. But okay, so this is, you like it. This is you don't. I was yeah. always like, yes. Precisely. Is that works. Well, yeah. in a in a Zoom in a Zoom gallery view, this is really really nice because it's extremely visible. I mean, some some youngins are taught these days to snap their fingers in class instead of applauding. I am just not a fan of the finger snap, and it doesn't it doesn't translate really well to uh, to Zoom. But but this does. Okay, um, I'll check it out. Thanks, Joel. Um, cool. So Bentley, if you want to. Um, should we start at the top and walk through, or what do you recommend? Uh, yeah, and, uh, and if anyone feels, feel free to change the order. Uh, I don't think any of us are uh, very passionate, so if there's some passion in the room, we'll honor that. Um, we we had a pretty long discussion about uh, the 
the scope. And we also don't have to be like completely solid on the scope, just as long as we, as a group, kind of have a sense of where it was going. We're not getting too confused and we can always change it later and make it bigger or make it smaller. Um, so, so yeah, so we can just talk about, <clears throat> do we want to have more discussion on widening the scope or narrowing the scope? Um, and then maybe have a discussion on the, uh, you know, what, what we want to see come out of this as an action. Um, thanks. And I think I proposed to the end of last call a process suggestion that I kind of like, but it's time consuming, which was, um, I think we each have our own sort of wishes or goals or imaginations about what this might turn into. If one of us were to sort of run a call with, uh, and then we all devoted ourselves to that one person's uh, goals and imaginations each time, that could be super informative and interesting. And it would also build out everything we're trying to do. And, and not everybody needs to jump in if somebody wants to opt out, no problem. But I think, I think that like Bentley's wishes for what this might look like are a little different from mine. I know that. I think there's a lot of overlap. And then there's a bunch of stuff that would make one of us really happy and the other one be like, wait, what? Which is totally cool. Like I, I, I'm very, very interested in that kind of information and activity. I think that's a good idea. Are you volunteering as well? Uh, yeah. So if no one opposes, uh, Jerry will be the dictator for the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I didn't mean that to be today's agenda. I meant we could sort of plan those out uh, and ask for people to step in. And we could then plan future calls around uh, a person being the owner of each call. Uh, so I don't know that That's we true. need to do that today. Um, so, uh, yeah, if we, if we don't want to step into that, we could, uh, you know, if, does anyone have any further discussion they want to have on the on the um, the size of the topic and what it is that we're kind of exploring together? Uh, John? It's muted. Uh, I don't know whether it was discussed. I think Peter said Stacy wrote it down somewhere, but we haven't talked about, I don't know if you even want to, talked about the fact that with uh, COVID being around, we currently don't have a safe community for immune, immunocompromised and disabled people to go out. They've basically become shut-ins for the most part. And um, seems like everybody's fine with that. Uh, CDC Director Walensky when she talked about, you know, people dying and all that, it's like, that's okay. It's only the already sick people, you know, like, it seems like we're, I don't know if you wanna, that's a whole nother discussion that we as a community seem fine to not care about immunocompromised and disabled people, whether we should think about making a safer place for them to go out in public, at least in some areas like uh, medical places, pharmacies, shopping, I mean, food stores, stuff like that. Public transport. So it, it seems that masks do kind of overlap with that because we'll, I, I assume one of the things is to have people wear masks within specific areas. Um, so I think that kind of fits under the scope. Um, there are other things we can do, and you know, you talked about improving air filtration was potentially would help that. If those are just the two main suggestions and I think it, it doesn't actually affect the top level scope. I but think, I, yeah, I think another suggestion I made last week was that we create a, a parking lot um, like you've got here in this document, but that we treat the parking lot as a place to put important things that are just slightly out of scope here. And maybe air filtration is one of those. Like we're really, I think if we narrow ourselves to face coverings, uh, then air filtration is a it definitely an important thing, but not part of this discussion proper. Um, and then what, what is the relationship between those things? That seems comfortable to me as a way of acknowledging the potential for scope creep without getting too much scope creep ourselves. Yeah, so I, I guess to then to Joanne's point is that it would, that topic of the effects of on, <clears throat> on people immunocompromised, people with compromised immunities uh, would be um, would fall under we should be wearing masks in certain areas in order to provide for them so I think it's within the scope 
Um, we can also start listing out things, and I don't know if it'd be good in the parking lot area or a different area to say the subtopics underneath um, that. I guess, and actually, that might even be part of something that would be on the proposed Mira board. We're kind of brainstorming about all the things that we're concerned about with. Um, actually, it's going to take me a second to get this open because I'm on my wrong domain. Uh, but so we're brainstorming the questions about masking. And so I guess that would, in my mind, that would fit under under those list of brainstorming items is how does this affect immunocompromise? Um, I, <clears throat> I, I think what we're saying now is that the, the, the thought I was raising at the end, um, at the last meeting is, is viewed as as scope creep that you know the the starting with the position of um, masking the the higher the grade the better is is good so you know that that's our focus I mean we're making that judgment and then the sense making focus is is in an effort to back that up. Am I am I correct? As opposed to COVID bad, how can we how can we most effectively deal deal with this inclusive of masks and um, and not not starting with that that not contentious among us but contentious. Um, given i guess that was kind of the, the point of this question up here is yeah i don't you know i i open the floor to anyone who wants to talk about expanding the scope so i don't know after after you've had a, a week to process um are you still passionate about expanding the scope and do you want to make a, uh, i mean you know i'm i'm not i'm not passionate i'm just like you know, um, it it strikes me that as we were, you know, I, I think I think it was in this discussion that like the issue of abortion came up as as a metaphor, as an analogy, and you know, it's like we're starting off with how do we get everyone to be pro-choice, kind of. <laughs> so I mean, we which we can do. You know, but it just seems that that if we're not if we're sense making and sense doing, it seems a little bit against our model to start with a a point of view, however much we may all agree on it, and and then look to buttress it. Um, I guess maybe we don't have it up here, but I don't see our initial. This, the, the statement we're working off having a point of view that masks are good. It's it's just saying what would what would you know the last the last claim that we kind of agreed on is what would a a, a wise society do in a pandemic? So if you want to change that, if you propose one, that'd be great. I think it's scope specifically to like masking, like how would a healthy society react with yeah. uh, respect to masking but, but right but it doesn't say masking is going to happen or be or good at all it doesn't make that claim the, right. the result the sense making could be we're never going to wear masks and no one's ever going to wear masks again i highly doubt that but that's within the scope and i think part of our discussion was that a healthy society is not an ideal society which is like <clears throat> in some people's minds a purely rational scientific society that would obviously mask because science but that a healthy society has conflicts in it and one of the issues is what convinces people to mask or not mask, et cetera, et cetera, and that that's a part of the discussion uh, that's within scope, Michael. I don't know if that resolves your your question, Sam. I, I mean, I guess so. I mean, it it just seems to me that like if we're if we're objectively saying faced with the dilemma that we have been um, with masks being what masks are and air filtration being what air filtration is and and you know uh 
quarantining being what quarantining is, um, you know, a, a, a just society wise society might say, you know what, we think we're going to like do operation warp speed on air filtration in all enclosed spaces and and stay quarantined until we've got that. I'm not saying that's rational, but I'm just saying that that would be that would potentially be a better solution than getting everybody to wear masks. Again, I'm not advocating that. I'm just it's a for instance. Um, but we're we're locking onto masks. I, 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 I won't say anything more. <laughs> I've said my piece and if I'm alone on it, then that's cool. I, sorry, I don't, did, uh, I think Peter, yeah, Peter was first, sorry. Go ahead, Peter. And uh, Joy and I both have something to say. Do you wanna go first? My impression after last meeting, what I walked away was I thought we kind of, or I thought it came to a point where people were seeing that air filtration might be the better topic because uh, two things, you know, some politically and all the, like people, there's reasons it's like kind of like abortion. Some people hate it, some people love mouse. But also a lot of people feel like the pandemic's ever with and they've moved on. They're living like it's pre-pandemic times. But what, in everybody's language though is the next pandemic. People are saying the next pandemic. So doing air filtration now um, would help us with the next pandemic and it's not a hot topic like abortion and masks. Um, yeah, so I thought already we had decided that maybe air filtration was the reason, but that could just be my take on it, not everybody's take on it. I, let me, Joel, just before Joel jumps in. Oh, and, and I'm sorry, Pete, you had something as well. Um, so I can, I can wait. Well, go ahead and, and reply to Joanna. So yeah, just a quick reply to that. I think we were moving towards that direction. We just had not checked with everyone. Do we want to do that? And and said yes as a group. Or had some sort of vote. So this is what this this thing is. Do we want to change it to air filtration? So you're voting yes, and you gave your spiel. And then we don't have a way right now for everyone to vote. Um, so so we just need to kind of have some way as a group to say that no one objects to that change of wording, and then we go forward. Pete. Uh, thanks, Bentley. Uh, my, I, I think, I think I'm going to say something similar to what Michael said, which is, I, I'm not sure that I have a preference, but, um, but one way of of I, Joanne's Joanne's mention of uh, immunocompromised people and and their place in society or their lack of place in society makes me think, and then deciding whether or not that's that's covered by the uh, overall topic or not. It, it makes me think about how sense doing um, sees itself in the context of society. Do we take um, a particular topic, uh, like what would a healthy society do with respect to air quality um, in a pandemic? Um, or are we situated more in so, it, so that's a, a particular topic and you just drill down on it and you don't have a lot of it. And I, I guess maybe you try to keep value judgment out of it. A different way is to center around people and society and say people and society is the important thing. And one of the things that societies bump into are dangers like pandemics and then how do they respond to that? So I feel like it's a, it's a choice between situating between a, you know, fairly clinical fact-based, you know, adjudication versus um, a kind of a larger connection to society and context, if that makes sense. So I, I see those as kind of two fairly different ways of, of looking at it. And if we were wanted to be contextualized as part of society and how does society work, that would be the super topic. And then masking or air filtration, air quality would be, you know, the sub topic that we were working on now for what it's worth. They're fixing our roof, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Muted, Jerry. <clears throat> I thought you were just beating your shoe on the table in protest. <laughs> 
Uh, Joel, floor is yours. Yeah, I I guess my thought is that I, I'm wondering if like if we do the filtration. Uh, my initial reaction is that the filtration part is more like practical or more uh, maybe valuable for like because uh, if it's like more cutting edge, you know, maybe there's more to gain from looking into it. But that the downside is like maybe maybe it becomes more of a research thing if if there aren't as many resources for it yet compared to like resources about masking will this be more yeah more like researching the this new uh new thing that may not have as much information compared to like practicing the the sense doing of something that has more information out there to like find um thanks joel i'll jump in um so for me air filtration seems like a niche question that could narrow our field of work considerably which might be a really good thing i think it's an important issue and i think all the questions we're bringing up are really good and need to be, be worked through um I also think that immunocompromised people are a small minority group. And one of the problems we have in society is a lack of recognition of minority populations of all sorts. And that creates debate in a, in a very strange and, and difficult way. Um, that said, air filtration is less controversial, as Stacey said in the chat. But I think that something slightly more controversial is actually more interesting for me personally, and also something that's more general public facing, like masking policy. That, that, that's something anybody could look at and go, oh, okay, as opposed to seeing air filtration for future pandemics, which is like, oh, I'll set that aside. Um, so from, from my perspective, once we have done a sweep through air, through masking, and one of the conclusions of masking would be, by the way, a way to get a, a, an exit strategy for masking is to actually pay careful attention to air filtration our next project over here is going to be air filtration, and we're going to go deep into it, and here's why and how. But for now, it's parking lot material is the way I would go through it. And then once through masking, <clears throat> so that a, a newbie could come in and sort of make some sense of masking, uh, then all these different subordination issue, issues would show up. Um, and, and there's a whole bunch of other things that show up once you're talking about air filtration in particular, because that is uh, it's basically a problem it's a, it's a large budget item problem for venues. It's not a general public problem at all. But one of the things we brought up last week when we, when we broached this conversation was, hey, what if there was a citizen science uh, and crowdsourced way to label spaces that were adequately filtered so that people who were immunocompromised would know that it's okay to walk into the space or people would know that it's okay to unmask maybe uh, in, the, in these spaces. And I think that's interesting too, but to me that's parking lot material for how to cope with air filtration uh, as as a whole, and I realize that that this is entirely my own feeling about the subject, and may not reflect anybody else's feelings here. So uh, let me make a process kind of suggestion: is that people, if if someone has an idea to improve or change the the main point that we're going over, I'd like to see explicit wording on what you'd like it to say, but rather than just talking about what we'd like to talk about. <clears throat> so then we can be concrete and make a group decision on what to go forward with. I'm not, I think either would be fine, but I don't have a, I don't have an actual worded proposal. Um, and I, and I need to find the original one, and Jerry, maybe you can <laughs> help me find it and put it here. I thought it was on the main document, but I can't find it. So we should have it up here as a reference, and then people can add other ones. I invite you to add it directly to the doc, which I put a link in the chat earlier, um, or to paste it in the comments if you can't get to it. And then um, I can put it in the doc, but, but let's have some actual proposals number and then figure out some way to, to decide. Does anyone have a um, proposed wording for a change of main topic?
Good idea of a wording that you'd like for your suggestion. I mean, I, I feel like it could be easily just like swapping out address masking with address air filtration. Um, and that could like be the equivalent of, sorry, it'd be like how would a healthy society address air filtration during various levels of pandemics? Uh, although perhaps if, if this becomes a thing, it would be just around forever and not just during pandemics. So maybe that wouldn't... Um... I, I like I like where you're going, Joel. And I would swap in instead of air filtration, it might be air quality. Um, so I I think we kind of we kind of fell into air filtration as the 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 key phrase. Um, but uh, for pan, this pandemic, it's at least air filtration and ventilation together. Um, and then if you say air quality, air quality includes air filtration, ventilation, masking. Um, you, we can kind of make a, or we could, somebody could, somebody could make a kind of an analogy between air quality and water quality. The reason we aren't all dying from cholera all the time is because 100 years ago, 120 years ago, people were dying from cholera and dysentery all the time. And it was realized that you could just give everybody clean water instead of having everybody have crappy water and get sick all the time. So the COVID folks are kind of like, guys, we did this before with water, let's do it again with, with air. And so air quality. John Tanza. So does that, um, does that properly express your suggestion, Pete and Joanne? Um, okay, so we have- um, yeah, yeah, um, because I feel as a society, I feel our society has already decided masks, we're done with it. COVID, we're done with it. I feel like no matter what you're, unless if, the thing I'm not understanding, unless if you guys as a sense building group are trying to come up with something and you're okay using a, a subject mass, which our society as a whole has decided we're over that. Like, I feel like you're, it's kind of like, you know, talking about whether or not we want um, like ice, you know, ice to keep our refrigerator cold. You know, like the olden days where you'd get blocks of ice. Like, I feel like masks, we're, we're, our society is beyond that. And we're supposed to be preparing for the next pandemic, and um, which nobody seems to be doing. Like everybody's saying there's gonna be another pandemic and no one's preparing. I feel like, I don't know if I'm making sense. I feel like our society has already decided masks, we're over that. I, I think you're making sense. And John, you've been, your hand's been up for a while. Do you mind if I respond to that real quick? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, would, I would say that, how well society would accept what what we find in our sense making is not a critical decision and what we want to sense make about. We should be willing to work on things that we think people won't, that will be very, 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 very difficult to convince people. First, we want to make the sense and then we can figure out what to do about the communication of it. So I, I wouldn't want to shy away from things that wouldn't be done. Um, that being said, there are other reasons for changing the air filtration, air quality is, is sounds so we might do that. Um, so we'll hear what John and Stacy does, but people be, uh, I would ask everyone to be thinking about, do you have a third description or at some point we'll get to the point where we can vote on which of those we wanna do. Um, and so so John and Stacy and Jerry, if, if y'all want to propose a new one or, or stump for one of those two, then that's great. If you have another topic, maybe we should hold that off until we decide this. John. I guess I'm coming at this from a different angle. Um, I think we're, right now we have a scarcity mindset. We're gonna work on this or that. <clears throat> and I think we should be having an abundance mindset, which is we all could have brought uh, our notes for 
thing we want to make sense out of to this meeting. And we could be spending 10 or 15 minutes on each person's proposal, having had it presented in a uniform fashion so that we can actually make headway on the content and not the format. So I posted an example of my process on the, uh, the Mattermost. So I did a puzzle on masks and um, I, I looked at the other, you know, it was like a week ago. It seems like it was a month ago. Um, I looked at it again at, uh, yesterday and it looked perfectly solid to me. I didn't see any huge biases. I didn't see any missing yes or no. John, do you want to explain the puzzle you put up a little bit? Because it's very specific and interesting in the way you made it specific. And I don't think everybody's had a chance to see it. Yeah. Um, can somebody post it? Is that the one about wearing your name on the wearing the name on the mask? That was awesome. I don't know if I know how to post. It up. Well, I mean, I'm, I mean, uh, <laughs> Bentley, Bentley can put it up, share it. We can, I can describe it. Well, this one, I, you know, P, um, yeah, Jerry inspired it because he was talking about potatoes. And, well, he was talking about French potatoes. I was, I misheard, and I anyway. So there's a there's a neuroscience nudge. Uh, about how to get people to do things they don't want to do. And so I, I simply put that onto the mask problem and came up with a non-monetary solution to mask wearing. All it would be is if anyone's passive aggressive or aggressive enough to make a point out of this, write mom on your mask and go out in public. No one will bug you about wearing a mask because they love their mom too. Now, maybe that could increase mask wearing in the country by 5%. Well, how many lives would have been saved? Probably a lot. It doesn't take much to tamp down, uh, you know, uh, viral spread. So here's my point. <clears throat> if we used a unified format and actually came prepared with our homework done, um, we could be using these meetings for actually doing sense making and not talking about doing sense making. And then everybody's idea would be done. <laughs> right. um, can I just say I don't I don't um, have a clear understanding, John, of what your suggestion is is there is is my uh is my graph on this matter most the graph is not up but the questions you posted on matter most are so you your, your, your puzzle page is not up i did post I wasn't able to locate it. if you scroll down and but, this... but but okay but meta to all of this is yeah. what are you suggesting that we do as a group i mean i heard you say we need to do our homework we need to do that but is the homework limited to a specific topic or not not limited to a specific topic. Well, that's what I was saying okay. about this being both and and not either or. If if you're so, you know, here's one thing I've learned. People don't want to work on public policy puzzles, public policy problems, working on a topic that they don't want to work on. They're happy to help someone else work on theirs to help them, but they, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time on making people feel guilty about not wearing masks. I don't find that to be an interesting puzzle. However, Jerry's idea about a neuroscience nudge was like, awesome. Oh my God, it's fantastic. Right. So well, I'd rather do asymmetrical uh, than symmetrical work or both and. I'd love to help you all with your puzzles, your whatever problem you're trying to solve. But you know, give me it in a, something I can. Can you scroll up? I think it's there. Um, is there nothing at the it's bottom? Below, it's below that. A little but further. That, okay. That, uh, what I don't understand is your. Uh, let me see if I can parrot back your suggestion. Your suggestion is that we each do some homework and we come with a either a policy idea idea or something. And we have it created. My question is, 
as a group, are we going to limit those suggestions, those policy ideas, those things that we're doing homework on to a specific topic, or is it just open? Because it sounds like you're saying we just all bring our, which is fine. I just, I just don't understand what your suggestion is. I think we is can it, all work on all of ours instead of picking one and forcing everyone to work on it. So John, right? I okay, I understand that. But is there a limit? Is there a scope to what those would be? Can I, can I bring something about uh, recycling? Sure. Okay, but I just want to make sure I understood your suggestion, and that's the part I want to understand. I think we'll get exponentially more work done. Um, I think that's clear now. Stacy, did you have something? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say that I, I don't care what we do because I'm just here for whatever, you know, and I know everybody has different reasons for what they're hoping to learn from this. But what I will say is that my opinion changed just in the course of this call. Um, when Joanne said that maths, you know, we've already decided not to, I started thinking about what's happening with the, with the train thing. And I'm thinking I really do want to work on masks and to the puzzle that John put up, you know, I did something similar when masking, I, I made it about an artistic project and, you know, I, I drew a smile on my mask and, you know, people were decorating it. So I kind of like that idea too. So whatever you do is fine, but I think masks are still relevant because a lot of the reason people won't wear them is because they don't believe they work. So let's find out, do they work under what circumstances? Thanks. <laughs> um, thanks, Stacey. I, I agree with everything you just said. Um, so Joanne, a couple a couple things. Um, thank you for the post, are we, is America post mask insight? Cause I hadn't seen it that way and I hadn't heard you say that. So that was a, a little light bulb going on in my head. Uh, thank you and Pete for saying, hey, water, and I'm I'm interpreting, interpolating a little bit here, but uh, improving water quality saved more lives than just about any other advance in society. And air quality is probably the next frontier there, which I didn't, hadn't heard, hadn't thought about, was all a second little light bulb that went off in my head. But then um, connecting with what Stacy just said, it feels to me like assuming masks are a done deal and can never be broached again in American society, and I'm exaggerating a little bit on purpose here, it feels very defeatist and it grants a victory to the right for this battle over our brains and over science and over everything else. And I think that that's important territory. I think that, I think that addressing that in our quest for sense doing actually matters a whole great bunch. Uh, it also, it doesn't set aside, but it, it, it doesn't leave room for clever ideas like John's to create a, 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 a poll, a puzzle about writing someone's name on your mask, which is a really specific thing to do, but it's a social tweak. It's a nudge. It's a challenge. It's a, it's a, it's a different way of going about uh, getting compliance on something we think is important. So I like that a lot. Um, and I think also that finding a way through masking more and better as needed um, is a way to create some kind of reconciliation between left and right or whoever it is that's hating on each other in the US or in other places. And that that reconciliation is actually a really important factor in this whole thing. One of the results for me, if I were if I were the ruler of the, of the sense doing on masking session, uh, one of the outcomes would be, hey, um, how did this get so polluted and what might we do to interfere with it, intervene with it and improve that and, and find a bridge through masking as an issue? Uh, so I, I like that a lot. And I've got a couple of stories in my in my bag of stories that that are that are like that about moments when there was a reconciliation when it didn't look like there could be one. And again, air filtration feels to me like an issue no muggle cares about. And and at back in the day, water purification was probably also an issue no muggle cared about except their uncle just died of, of diphtheria or or whatever uh, or typhus and it was in the water supply so but 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 it's a public policy issue and it's an organized large-scale organizational issue but I, I i think that one of the challenges of an air filtration project which is a project i would also like to see follow masking is how do we get um air filtration picked up everywhere so i'm complete So let me make another kind of suggestion on the process. Um, 
because it, it sounds like several people might be still kind of uh, stumping for either mass or air quality or both. Um, I let me propose that I, you know, the more that I think about it, John's suggestion and it mixes in with Jerry's suggestion uh, so that we don't agree on a topic um, and we just choose a person and we all kind of know that as a group we're interested in um, and pandemic based stuff. So I'd like to kind of suggest it stay in that area. And then, um, you know, we choose a person next week to be the uh, benevolent dictator for the day, or I'm sure there's a better word, but less contentious word for that. Um, so what I'd like, I just suggest, although Joanne and Peter, you don't have to do this, anyone else will raise their hand, is to, you know, say that you kind of agree with doing that. And if, but if you want to talk about these other things, either tell me why you don't want to do this thing, first uh because to me it's really between doing either one or two or three um and then we can um if we agree on three then we just choose who's going to be next week um as opposed to debating a main topic uh that's it and whoever's benevolent dictator could change the scope of the project so so pete and joanne if you want if, if it was if it was your turn individually or together you could say hey today we're doing air filtration and here's here's how we'd like to proceed and i'm i'm game for that you're muted that was the hand not the mute <laughs> no we were juggling keyboards and screens um uh Jerry, I wanted to 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 I, I I actually like the idea of benevolent dictator for a day. I, I think that's a good suggestion. Um uh I wanted to talk just a little bit about masks or we're we're over with masks. Um uh and maybe Joanne will jump in here too, but my observationally, um uh one of the things that we're in with masking now is uh the the topic itself has to be has has to borrow a word from Cory Doctorow um the topic has been imshitified um another way to say that in in uh, consultant terms uh it's become a wicked problem so the people who would advocate masks or the way Joanne and I wear masks um, uh, is like several tangled steps away from somebody who's on the, on, on the other side who's going to say, I, I don't think society should be wearing masks. Um, a big one is what kind of mask do you mean? Do you mean a filtering face piece? Um, respirator? Do you mean a cloth mask? Do you mean a surgical mask? Joanna and I don't even think of cloth masks and surgical masks as being worth wearing. Like, I don't know why you're wearing that thing because it's useless, essentially useless. Um, it's not quite useless. It'll keep you safe for a few minutes. Um, a filtering face piece respirator will keep you safe for, you know, 12 hours. So the, there's a, there's a, it's not a, you know, it's a qualitative, it's a difference in kind. It's not a difference in, you know. Um, so that's just one thing. Another thing is how do you wear it? You know, do you wear it over your mouth? Do you wear it over your mouth and nose? Do you wear it on your chin? Do you wear it on your elbow? Um, uh, if you have facial hair, how do you get your, your mask to fit properly? Um, so the, 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 what the forces against masking whoever they are and i think there there are a few of them um but they've successfully enshittified the the problem such that if you bring the problem into this public sphere and say i want to talk about masking well i mean i really want to talk about respirators well i mean and just just in the in the process of talking through it you would get so gummed up 
with what the hell are you talking about and why do I care about that? And I, I would be really afraid that if, if we successfully, like if we could wave a magic wand and make society talk about masking, we would get this you know, crappy regulation. Everybody has to wear a, a surgical mask um, because surgical masks are kind of good enough that, you know, and then they fit over beards and whatever. And then this, this actually happens in real life nowadays. It's, 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 it is, it has happened that if you go to a hospital and your, your staff, they make you take off your nice N95 and they give you a crappy mask to put on because everybody's wearing the same mask. Literally, you have to, you have to step down your personal safety to enter the zone of, you know, okay, we've all, we've all um, come to a compromise uh, that, that satisfies everybody or, you know, dissatisfies everybody. So um, right there, there's a really, it's, if, if, I, if I step back from whether or not we talk about masking or air filtration or whatever, the, this, I, I, I come to respect our choice of, um, or whoever's choice it was to talk about masking because just the process of untangling that so that you can discuss it with people across the multiple aisles that we find ourselves on is a big challenge and a, and a big important thing that if we could if we knew how to do that successfully um you know we'd be a better place so so then i think you know if so so then it relieves me a lot to be able to say hey let's talk about air quality um in the same way that we talk about water quality rather than let's talk about um, you know, masking uh, because at least we can talk productively about, about air quality. It's gonna be hard to talk productively about masking. Um, just to say that the things you said are not common knowledge and would be really productive during a masking conversation. Like people aren't aware that cloth masks are practically worthless. Um, and, and just getting that knowledge out would be like a big plus. And to me, that's a big win. I don't dismiss that at all. But, but the, uh, to get that information out, you have to challenge another piece of information, which is masks are a way of, uh, any kind of masks are a, a way- of Social to, control. Yeah performing social which is control. which is the so battle i'd like to address face on so let's not talk about I'm not intended author respirators is a thing let's talk about whether or not it's social control right so you always end up chasing another talon of the enshittification procedure rather than being able to pick any one of those and you know drill into it so while we still have the mic uh john i love your abundance mindset i'm all for it totally um, the reason why I was down on masks was when I go out to society, I'm the only one wearing a mask. I just, the looks on people and why I still wear masks, whatever, I just, I feel deflated every time I go out and the reaction I get from people. I'm worried about writing or decorating your mask because if you're using a proper respirator, I don't know whether or not the stuff would um, reduce the effect. That was before. See? That was in the beginning. That was yeah. before we even had yeah. masks. Yeah, whether it's a, um, so I'm excited. So in terms of Joel, um, there's so much information out there about how to properly air filtrate uh, stuff. It's out there. It's, and actually there's a school in Australia who I think they're eighth graders did a whole thing. They went to every room in the school. They figured out how big the room was, how much um, air filtration they needed. They put monitors up in every room. It's their science project to monitor, like kids could do it. So, um, and the last thing, I think that's it. So I am excited. Like I thought it was, a, if, if you guys want to talk about masks, I'm so excited about it. I wish more people, but respirators, I wish more people did. I just thought if you guys came up with this brilliant way to tell people, you know, this is why we should wear masks. I thought, you know, we wouldn't have any success out in the real world, but I would love it if we did like public transport and hospitals, stuff like that. I would love it if more people wore masks where we fig figured out how and when, you know, maybe not all the time. I mean, we wear it all the time, but so that's it. And we're complete. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very, uh, Bentley, may I just a tiny thing? Um, Joanne, for outdoors, um, it strikes me that you just said your heart drops when you step outside and you're the only one facing, a, uh, you wearing a mask. Um, 
And my, in my ideal healthy society world, people outside who are socially distanced would clearly not need to put on a mask. You should be dismayed stepping into a public space when no, I mask. meant outdoor. I meant in public. I meant in. We don't mask outdoor. Outdoor. I I have to say just just anecdotally. Yeah. Um, uh, yesterday we had a beautiful time out at the tide pools. Uh, there's a, a great place to do tide pools at low tide here. To to get there, it's crowded in the parking lot, crowded on the path to the the tide pools, and then it opens up way up, and you're you know you're uh, 50 feet, 100 feet, uh, 200 feet from the next person. To get out of there, though, it it narrows back down. And you have to cheek by jowl, scramble over slippery rocks and, and stuff like that. And, and I, I was an idiot. And the, the stress of getting close to people and worrying about that and the slippery rocks, there was a little bit of rain made it more slippery. I fell and hurt myself. Mm. A lot of the reason I hurt myself was because, you know, I didn't have a mask on. And a, a couple of the volunteer docents, I saw them wearing masks and I'm like, you guys are crazy, man, because we were out, you know, literally hundreds of feet away from each other. But then towards the end, it was like, <laughs> I wish I had my mask on and then and I wouldn't be freaking out. They weren't just wearing masks, they were wearing the N95 respirators. And, you know, and, and I don't want to seem overly cautious, but literally, you know, it, like it squeezes down to uh, like a 10 by 10 space with, you know, 20 people in it or something like that, coughing and, and sneezing and breathing on each other. It's, uh, you know, and, and you kind of have to go that way to get out. So but we were outside, so we weren't masked. And there are outside conditions where masking is needed. Mm -hmm. I totally, totally agree with that. Um, sorry, Bentley. That's great. Um, so uh, let me propose a path forward again, uh, is that uh, we go ahead and go on John's suggestion and Jerry's suggestion. Uh, and we don't have to agree on a main topic. Um, we choose a benevolent director for the day. I suggest that that be the person whose birthday is closest to today going forward. Mine was at the beginning of February, so I will be last. Um, uh, so if someone who, and this is of course optional, you don't have to do it. Um, but if, if no one objects, we could just see who has a birthday in March and April, and that person can go first. Anyone who, who, who wants to, maybe give me a hand up. Who wants to be director for the day? If you'd like to be director for the day, just type your birth date in the chat and that'll, that'll, that'll do, kill two birds at one stone. How often do we meet? Is this every week or every other week? Every yeah, week. Every for Monday now. for now. Is it just me and Jerry? The only megalomaniacs on the call? You didn't try it, no? I could swear you'd want to. I feel like I'm too, I'm too, feel like I'm too new at this situation. Oh, at, this, at this stage, you are old OG, so. You were in our second call, so. You're a senior you're now, call. Yeah, you, you're senior staff. <laughs> out, of, out of three, so you have, you know, 36% of our experience. Do not be bashful. And also, I'm in, I, I want to find a better word than director as well. I, I think this is the person that we will focus our attention and our love on in order to help them help as a community make sense in a topic that they're passionate about or curious about. So I'd almost, Stacey, you're really good with words. You think of something even like where they're the receiver of, uh, although some people don't want that much attention, but you know, it's people that will, the person that we will be assisting and encouraging and helping and providing information so, to. So it's kind of like a group coaching session or something like that. Yeah, 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 not even, uh, yeah, I, I like that. I'm thinking even more like, a, like we even like, that's a barn raising, right? So we're not just coaching them, we're actually doing the physical labor to raise their barn, and then next week it'll be someone else's barn. Well, and that's why, I thing we word, that's why I used the word director, because it's sort of like directing your own play. You're 
making the decisions on what you need or what you're asking for people. And, you know, Pete mentioned that benevolent director is like a typical term. And Pete, I understand that. And my feeling is when you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And I don't want to keep doing that. But we can um, name it later also. Yeah. Uh, Stacey, the reason I was liking benevolent dictator is that it's it's a it's a tongue in cheek, funny reference. Oh, I understand. The dictators and all that and i like and i really like funny names and titles i think they 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 add a little bit of joy to things but happy to rename it to director or does bentley want something else i mean in other groups i've used the word energy director but those are more feely kind of groups so i don't know what you want to use here <laughs> oh we're abolishing feelings here no feelings in this room logical uh um i uh, so my in it in the, the actual name doesn't matter that much. And uh, but uh, to be, I I just I wonder if there's some people that are going to be a little bit shy and even like director sounds like it's too much in charge. And I and I want to I want them to feel like they can come in with a topic and we will help pull things out of them. I almost that's the that's the sense I'd like to give. I have no suggested words, and there may not be a concept in existence for us to use. And and a director may be best uh but i just want to throw that out there in case it sparks something for someone if i may amplify what bentley just said before you step in joel um in the spirit of a writer's workshop process which dick gabriel wrote a book about um i think the spirit of participating under the benevolent dictator is to make whatever the benevolent dictator's vision is as good as possible given what their vision is as they stated it and for all of us to participate both as participants and as improvers of the process, fleshers out of the process, whatever that, whatever else that might be, like in 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 good spirit, uh, to help that person's vision come as true as possible in ninety minutes. Uh, I I don't actually have anything to add to the name specifically. I was going to uh, mention something about the process of using a, a benevolent dictator. Um, I'll just. I, I think we've we've had the the problem of like um, other people having like things they want to talk about and like questions to bring up and I think the the host or whatever director we're talking about will help solve that I think it'll it would still be useful to have a a means or a process set to like record those things that the benevolent dictator decides we don't want to talk about right now um, yeah so I. Maybe they don't. Maybe they wouldn't even be the one to record that. Maybe like there could be a benevolent minutes taker or something. I don't know. Um, but I think it would still be helpful to track the things that the dictator decides not to. I've been putting some bullet points about BDFD process in the doc, which uh, Bentley just scrolled up to, I think. Um, and we can, of course, rename it. Uh, but that was what I thought that. You know, whoever's got the role for the week, look at this list and add to it, make it better or whatever. So Bentley, it's just you and me. Anybody, yeah. anybody else? Anybody else? Bueller? Bueller? I think that what that ends up being, if no one objects, is that we'll hit Jerry's formulation, which is actually, I think, the main previous one for a meeting. And then we can either continue that that topic if they find it interesting, anyone else in the group at the end of next meeting or before can raise their hand and volunteer and say, hey, I would like to be the focus, the focuser for the next meeting. Um, uh, um, yeah, so feel free to um, volunteer is the wrong word, but um, yeah, to um, step up and, and suggest that you would like to be the focus um, or, or guide the conversation um, in the future ones. And I can understand several people wanting to see someone else go first in a social situation like this. That's not abnormal. Um, so yeah, I, but I think we could, and we could start that now. and. Uh, and continue into the next meeting and then we could switch to 
either me or if someone else has, has stepped up. Does anyone have any objections to that being our path forward? No, I just have an observation. Um, <clears throat> I think in a previous call we talked about, or I talked about divergent processes and convergent processes. And neither one's right or wrong. Um, and you have to diverge before you can converge. But I find that it's best to put a time limit on the divergence. Um, Clayton Christensen called it resource restriction. So resource restriction makes you creative because you know you have to like get something done now. And a lot of times the difference between A, B and C is zero. And you could just flip a coin a couple of times and pick a winner and move on with the rest of our lives. So I guess, I think the last two or three calls we've had have been almost totally, almost totally divergent, which is really interesting. Uh, it doesn't get anything done, but it's really interesting. Um, what it does get done is I heard two things that were convergent worthy. And one was Jerry's idea about nudges and the other one was Joanne's idea about ventilation. Uh, I'm interested in once the divergent process delivers an instigating question that can be converged on. That's what I'm interested in. So if, if you know, we had 10 of these meetings and they were all totally divergent, I might still come because I'm listening for the, the convergent worthy ideas. But I also would be really interested in actually working <laughs> on a convergent idea. Um, and I have a filtering process and mine is I want the one that's the most, that has the least political friction. That's the space I work in. Um, Although John, it seems to me one of your skills is choosing a zone of some political friction yet posing a puzzle question that ev evades the politics of it. Am I kind of right? Well, yeah. Um, like the territories you pick aren't free of political friction. You just find no, a way fair. into them. That's you fair. find a way into right. them that disarms people and takes away some of the political freight. Yeah, I think you actually, I, I thank you for saying it that way. I hadn't thought about it. Though. Thanks. So I, Not, I'm, I'm just sort of saying that I admire the way in which you approach things that have friction. Yeah, See, so, what, and, yeah. I was going to say, it, why, why not, as a philosophy, why not do the things that we can agree on first and then find out what we're fighting about later? Because we may never even get to the fighting. Because there's so much stuff we could actually do that's like so wildly good. And that's why I was drawn to this group, sense making and sense doing. Well, I think there's a high overlap between what I'm trying to do and what this group has stated what they want to do. And I find that really interesting. So I, I would suggest, I, you know, I think different people are going to have different convergent. Um, I, I think it'll be hard to get a completely convergent one. So when you see another one that you're passionate about, or if you want to throw your hat in the ring to do for us to help you do a little bit more sense making on one of those, um, feel free to throw in your, your birth date. And well, for, I, I will. Uh, for example, Joanne, I, I was hoping to do air filtration in the same style that I did the mask marks puzzle that I posted. Uh, what I'm finding is that that's not in my wheelhouse. So what that means is I have to actually do a fair amount of brand new outside my normal expertise level 
to gather in facts to try to find these little ways in like Jerry was talking about, you know, and I'd be happy to work on air filtration with anyone who would want to actually do the gathering of the 16 yes reasons and the 16 no reasons, because that to me is the hardest part. Well, the hardest part is getting the instigating question done. But I think we almost have that uh, with the air quality the point. That water analogy was really quite good. So I just, I don't know if I'm drawn to <laughs> doing the 16 yeses and no's myself. I'd love to do that with y'all. I could do some, and then we could put together all of what we found do a Bayesian sort the best 16 yeses, the best 16 no's, and I can go ahead and finish a puzzle. Now, for me, that's something I could publish. For you, it might be something you can do in your own sphere of influence. Publish something yourself, a uh, new idea, do an article. Um, so yeah, let's, I, I suggest we have that as one of our, um, the Neverland director for the day activities. Um, and either Sean, you could do it or someone else could pick it up. Um, uh, so that, that would be a perfect activity. We could all do research. And also after the meeting, let's go do research and come back together and you know span it over two meetings. Um, so I guess, I guess do, you, do you want me to put your name in the yeah, I, I always have trouble getting into Google Docs for some reason on this computer. I, I, I can get into it usually on a different computer, but this one doesn't have autofill on the password and it's just drives me crazy. Yeah, that's that's fine. I mean, if you just want to be in there, what's uh what month are you going in? July. Sounds like you'd be next. Only now, if, if you, want, want, you only, can make... only if you guys want to help do the research. I don't want to, I'm not. It wasn't my puzzle. I'm happy to help someone else. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so I guess you know, uh, yeah. That's that. I mean, that's what it'd be. We'd all be saying that we're all going to help with that, not just Joanne. Um, and Joanne and I can help, uh, set, like, uh, do do the homework part out of bound too. Um, for air filtration, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it's an awesome, it's a really great idea. I mean, it's like, you know, gave me goosebumps when I heard about it. So you wouldn't mind if we if we use that, that the process is finding the six yes no's and the topic is air fixation. And maybe we also need to kind of come together and or or work on narrowing it down to what's a more specific question, right? Because just air filtration is yeah, you, if you want to see an example that maybe is easier to read than what was on Mattermost, if you go to policykeys.com, at the bottom in the center, there's a button called last week's uh, keys. You click on that and we published a puzzle last week on uh, decriminalizing sex work. And you'll see um, the, uh, yeah, click out of that and then click. Right, that's it right there. Yep. Okay, then you can expand it uh, uh, up in the top bar. Yeah, there you go, great. So you see the, there, perfect, well done. Okay. You see 16 yeses and 16 noes. Um, and it's a role-playing game. You don't have to do the role-playing part. I, I just need the uh, yeses and noes. Um, the role-playing part though is quite informative. Uh, it's shocking how much I don't understand something until I actually sit in that Rolls chair and go, oh, wait a minute, they will totally be against this. Or they'll totally be for it. Or, um, and so it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, but in real life. Um, so, and then uh, we're publishing a blog uh, to blow up and explain the puzzle. But all this is is a, is a lateral thinking tool uh, uh, combined with uh, 
solution scoring, role playing. And it's just a one page narrative tool, basically. So usually if, it's if, easier, go ahead. If I may, um, just a, a lateral thinking tool. It, it's a, it's a, another way to, another way to say it is it's a attractor object to bring people uh, from both sides around. It, it's basically a distraction. Um, hey, look at this shiny object. We could actually do this puzzle together. Maybe it's related to what we're talking. We're just we're arguing about. Maybe it's not. Let's do the puzzle together and then learn stuff. Uh, you know, without without uh, it, it's short circuits the the immediate. Um, like, I I don't want to get involved in that debate. Right, and I think in most cases, by choosing a good convergent question, most people will agree mostly. Well, that's shocking. Most people will agree mostly. Well, that's not what we're seeing in uh, social media. We have to talk about all the stuff that we don't agree on over and over and over again. You know? Um, well, I've done almost 100 of these now. And uh, the heat map changes a lot, a lot. So it's this isn't groupthink. I mean, the, the heat maps do not resemble each other. There's, yeah, okay, there's there's patterns. But of course, it's a game. There'll be patterns. Um, so, question for you, John. Yeah. Um, the, I find, I find my eyes glaze over when I look at all the numbers in the middle of this. I don't, I can't really focus on any of them and I'm not paying attention at all. If it was an actual heat map and you could play with the axes a little bit and say, show me this, show me that, change this, change that. And boom, the big numbers would float up into the left as happens a lot in heat maps. We can totally do that in version two or three. This is the this is the minimally viable version you're looking at. So. That's what I'm thinking about. How far away are you from version two or three and do you need help with those things? Well, that's interesting. Um, so version two, I wanna add a 33rd and 34th reason in a blank field. And that way I can crowdsource other people's ideas. That's very awesome. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to do is, um, well, no, that's too complex. Um, Yes, there's a lot of like window dressing stuff that can go on. Here's the heat map. Now click once and you get the names and click twice and you get the reasons and click here and the reasons go away and click here and uh, you know just see all the, uh, I don't know. There's all sorts of ways to play with the data. I mean, it's almost inexhaustible. Um, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, pragmatic for the moment. <laughs> Just need need the data all in one place because the AI needs to know where to grab it from, right? So it has to be in one place. Because I have an AI on this that it's 256 Supreme Courts deadlocked evenly. All of them are different. And Maybe we could. I think we could spend a lot of time going into policy keys, and we probably should do that in a meeting. That's uh, Joel. Did you have something that you wanted? Uh, I was just gonna say, like, if we if we know we want to do the like policy keys things for the next meeting, do we have homework that we want to, to like specifically try and like know we want to do for next time with the last like thirteen minutes? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, if the person that's going to host it can give us an instigating question, then we can all do homework, yeses and nos. If the person who's going to run the meeting wants to diverge, and find out what the instigating question is. I think that's fine, uh, but we should probably just least, least read up on the topic a little bit. And then maybe anyone in the room might come up with a great convergent answer. And then we can absolutely uh, use the policy keys as the, I like that attractor object, just to focus our attentions uh, specifically. Does that answer your question? I think I have a follow-on question to Joel's. Um, so my understanding is that by accident of birth date, our topic for next Monday is air filtration. And our mission is to come up with, I don't know that we need to do this before we get there, or maybe we should, 
to come up with a, a, a question for a policy keys puzzle and then 16 things that might be a yes and 16 things that might be a no during the call. I don't know. And that we have three people who are, are sort of experts on this topic, all of whom appear to be kind of reluctant to step forward and actually be the hosts for this call. Because John, from what you just said, it sounds like you're not eager to be the host for the call. And Joanne and Pete are, are like sort of like, mm, don't know. Uh, at least that's my perception. And so I'm trying to figure out, like, do we have agreement on this? And what, how do we want to step into this thing? Because I'd love to have a I'd love to have uh, some knowledge of what we're going to jump into on Monday, and so we can all jump in wholeheartedly. So yeah, I, I, I'm thinking it might be a good idea to separate <clears throat> the person that's facilitating the call from the from the focus, because I think a lot of people are intimidated facilitating a call, and that's okay. But someone who who's who will be kind of like the decision maker? But yes, that's that's a that's a good conversion phrase. Or this is the, you know. Um, so, I I think it'd be good uh, if we could, uh, since the topic idea was Joanne's and the process is John's. Uh, I think, um, or at least were initiated by there. I'd like one of them too to to say, yeah, I'm, I'm okay to be the person that when we have to kind of make a decision, but they won't have to be facilitating the call. I'm um, happy to facilitate, but I that's just not my wheelhouse, so. Um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, it, it doesn't, I don't think it needs to be the person's wheelhouse that's that brought up right. the question. It's, it's, it's everyone else's responsibility to, to, to Go out and find information, bring it back. So it'd be nice if we and Joanne is kind of an expert just because of the, the amount of time she's put into. So it's my understanding. Go go ahead, Joanne. John, it's uh, not your wheelhouse to facilitate. Or no, no, I, I'm a, actually I'm a professional facilitator. I, I uh, it's not Which, well, what, What's not your wheelhouse? Air, air filtration science. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I can read. I can. I. I'm, I'm intelligent. I can sort stuff, but I don't. I can't. You know, I'm not. I don't have like nine years of experience. In, yeah. So, uh, moving air. You know. Yeah. So, so if you can kind of uh, drive the policy keys process, and rely on Joanne and whoever else as subject matter experts, that that makes it work, right? But I'm still confused. There were at the beginning, there were people who said they were so excited about talking about masks. And John made this wonderful thing about why don't we do have an abundance mass, mindset. So I don't know how we got from that to next week we're going to talk about air filtration because it seemed like people genuinely wanted to discuss the mass situation. And I think the only reason why I was poo-pooing the mask at the beginning was I thought when I go out, and I mean indoor other indoor places, you know, people are so negative about masks that I thought it was like beating a dead horse, but I'm excited to know that some of you do want to talk about masks. So John's, John's suggestion in Abundance Month mindset was, why don't we pick something and work on it? So this would be a first example of working on something together. But I thought the my abundant mindset is, why can't we talk about, like, if we're talking about air quality or not breathing in COVID, like they could be both, but it could be that one phone call will be on filtration, one will be on masks. I just want to tell people that if, if there are people here who want to talk about masks, I'm excited about doing it. Yes. Uh, my understanding oh. of how we're ending up with this mix of topic is that <laughs> Bentley suggested a protocol to go by birthday. And by that logic, John is ahead of uh, Bentley and me, who are the only three who've stepped in to say, let's do a call. And that John, I think, had said, John has already done a pass on masks, which was the let's put our name on masks. And he was like, oh, ne next, next low hanging fruit might be air filtration. Let's go yeah. there, which is, I think, why that is the presumptive topic on the table to run a policy keys around. All of that is up for uh, change. I guess I feel like we never really talked about math. We talked about talking about stuff. Well, we yeah. talk. But we yeah, will. Let me, let me respond. Yeah. yeah, let me, we can't talk about it all at once. 
So yes. it's just pick arbitrarily picking an order. So the person who volunteers to be the topic person, which I think really technically is you because John's facilitating and he's using the policy keys process. So Joanne, you pick the topic. We will all come around that. And John will facilitate it through policy keys is my proposal, unless you really don't want to do that. But your only responsibility is to say, hey, this is what I want to talk about right now. Unless you don't know which you want to talk about because you want the community to be involved. But I say, don't care about what we want. We're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Which do you want to talk about? <laughs> and the, the expansion is every week you can change that because a different person will take it. So that means we're expansive, but we're also narrowing it down to something that can happen in an hour and a half. Does that make sense? I just want to acknowledge that people did want to talk about mass, and I don't, I want to encourage that. Totally encourage of talking about mass. I'm happy to go by birth lotto and go talk about air filtration next Monday. And that would, I would be perfectly content to do that. And I think that we'll, we'll get back to masks because when I get my turn, that's where we're heading on, on, on my benevolent dictator for the day day. Um, and I don't fear that we're suddenly somehow going to lose everything or whatever. I'm, I'm good with this. Excellent. So I guess that assumes that actually John's the focus. Um, well, I'm the facilitator. Yeah. Someone needs to be the focus. I don't need a facilitator. Well, that sort of is though. I, I think I think John's using the word, I'm sorry, John. No. I think John's using the word facilitator as in facilitating something getting done, which is different. I think it's this, I think it if the assignment, the homework is to get some background so we can come to the table and come up with the the 16 reasons is that is that correct that that's what we're going to be doing next week okay so if if that's the homework that we've done so that we're able to come in here to come up with the 16 reasons i get the sense that john is willing to help make that happen yeah it's 16 yeses and 16 noes it's 32 total yes it, I, as i, I think understand as I understand it, we don't need to do that as homework. We're going to do that live because we have somebody who's a subject matter expert. Um, so we don't have, yeah. yeah, yeah so, gonna... so we don't have homework as, as I understand it. Well, I mean, we'll get but way more done if the homework's done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what, what would the homework be? 16 yeses and 16 no's. No. Okay. And yeah. question, pros and cons. I mean, you can use- Do it. what question? Well, we, we almost had an instigating question. It was, um, it has to do with. Um, it should, uh, how should would a healthy health society health. address air quality during various levels of pandemics? But it that's needs so, to be like a yes, no question, right? That seems like too big yeah. a question for a policy keys. So like, John, should. I wonder. Yes, uh, no, yeah, under, it should be a yes, no. Right? John, I wonder if you and me and Joanne can get together between now and, and next meeting to do the homework together. Because sure. I, I don't know that we'll, we'll get the right yes, no questions. I, but I'd love to, that'd be great. Do you, do you mean the homework is just coming up with a question or that you guys would also do all the like yes, no stuff? Oh. I think uh, we, the first step is if you get the right question, everything else just falls into place. It's like magic. You get the wrong question, that puzzle can sit there on my computer for a year. <laughs> so what I heard, what I heard Jerry say earlier, and Joel just now kind of maybe implicated it, uh, that a a reason not to do the homework first is for us participatorily to uh, to do it together and see how you know how you would put together policy quiz keys questions. Yes, the problem is when something is highly technical, and this one's highly technical. So, so can we do? Can you and me and Joanne do enough homework to to lay some ground and mm -hmm. then and then finish it on the? Yeah, call? actually, that's a lot of fun. Actually, um, I've I've con I've considered building that into my model. Uh, just enough. It's like a Sudoku, just enough to get you started, and then it you got to finish the rest. Right. Yeah, that that's kind of fun, and so yeah, we could do that. We could like get a policy key started. Uh, when I I huddle with my interns every Saturday, and 
90 minutes can fly by like 10 minutes when we've got a puzzle that's partially started and then everyone's just riffing on it. And it's like fill it in there and fill it in there and score that. Oh, look, there's a pattern. And all of a sudden the whole puzzle starts coming together. And all of a sudden there's a, there's a narrative. There's a completed narrative. It's awesome. You know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we could do that. Just uh, what I call it when you prime, prime a pump. Prime the pump. Um, Stacy, you were in the queue. Are you complete? Did you it all got answered. Yeah, it's all worked out. Okay. Cool. Um, briefly, <laughs> briefly. Sorry, go ahead, Joanne. Um, I just want to say, if I was going to put the question, if next week's going to be filtration, we're going to get back to mass. My question would be: Should we put? Should we mandate time and resources be put into air filtration, minimum standard for air filtration, the way we've done that with water? That would be my thing. Like we've done it with water. We need like the whole everybody, society, government, whatever to mandate. We did that with water. You know, when you open your when you your tap water, whatever, there, you can expect a minimum standard. And so my thing is, should we do that with air? quality that, that feels to me like one of the 16 questions or not even that it feels to me I like that that deconstructs into a couple questions for the 16 questions okay um so you yeah you're making a policy yeah. mandate which feels to me like a, a narrower piece of this large puzzle okay. um and i think it's important i feel like it's important that the two of you and john just Pick, pick a focusing question that works for policy keys, which John understands. And I think there's a special yes. art to that. Uh, and then if we show up together next Monday and, and John, if you coach us through the process of starting us in and then and let us rip on the 16 yes and no questions, I think we're, we're off to the races and it'll turn into like one of your intern calls. But just, you know, you'll, you'll need to coach us a little bit on, on how this actually works. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so really, yeah, it's 16 yes and no reasons. Reasons. Uh, you have yeah. to ask a question to get to the reason. Yes, but cool. Yeah. So let me just kind of make a, a, a observation, which isn't a big deal. I I I don't it, it sounds like the homework is actually in finding the 16 questions and that can't happen. No, until the homework is the focusing question only. Well, the homework at this point, right? But I think that would be something that I would like to happen in one of these meetings, not offline. Oh, cool. I, would, I don't see a reason why we wouldn't do that as a group here. And then the homework could be us doing the research to answer that question, which I think is the bigger piece of work, right, John? Or is John is a bigger part? Oh, no, I, and I said before is if you get the right instigating question, it's magic, it's fun, it's awesome. You get the wrong instigating question and the puzzle never gets finished. <laughs> And I can easily see 90 minutes going by where we're just talking about the focusing question, which I don't want to have happen. And I would be, and I would never have come up with, hey, would should we be writing people's masks, why uh, people's names on masks so we know why we're wearing a mask? I would never have gotten to that. And I'm happy to jump into a very specific question like that to brainstorm the 16 reasons. So I kind of would love to show up and show up to the call with the focusing question set and I will go with whatever's presented. There's another way to do it too. We could actually do uh, maybe two parts like uh, first half, second half. Of the call? First, yeah, the first half of the call we could work on uh, diverging onto something and then the second half of the call we could continue a convergence from the previous meeting or start the convergence on that Day's topic, but that way again, resource restriction. If you don't res if you don't restrict the resources, we'll take ninety minutes, and maybe we'll come up with a question. And so we're out of time, uh, Sean. You're the facilitator, so you can tell us what we need to do next, either in Mattermost uh, or Mattermost is a good place to to follow. If session. John's in there, so it's convenient. Yeah. So I, I think what I heard, and I'm sorry to take a, a little bit of time. I think what I heard John say is maybe we could break it up. Um, John, I think Jerry and Bentley are both up for doing pretty hardcore facilitation, meeting facilitation, resource restriction to make sure that we get output rather than divergence. Is, is that fair, Bentley and, and Jerry? We can, or or John can do it. He's... I, I think I'm noted for not being the best time boxer, but I'm very happy to facilitate. 
Mary is very good at facilitating the expansion. Lots of yes, yes. Oh man, the expanse. <laughs> and I'm give, better at give this. Me, so. Give me the expanse. Give me like the, uh, I, the the Epstein drive, and I am off and off to the races. <laughs> I just think, John, give it some thought and uh, suggest what you'd like to do. It could be having a meeting with Joanne and Pete separately. It could be waiting till the next call. We're in your hands, and if that's too much pressure, just let me, Jerry, know. It'll take. We are putty in your hands, John. Well, what I like to suggest is we, uh, Joanne and uh, uh, the three of us all do have a preliminary meeting because if we can get a good, a good instigating question, we can share it with the group in advance and we can just like have some fun. Uh, if we get, I don't think we'd get stymied. I think what actually could happen is we could come up with like three which is fine. That can be three puzzles, but we need to pick one to work on together as a team. And we can make notes like the parking lot on other puzzles, but it's a nice way to just keep all of the ideas in one place. All right, can we'll I... let y'all do that offline. Okay. For now. It sounds like we should till some ground and then come like with a little bit of- With a broken. technical, at the tech, with a really technical topic like that one, yes. If it's purely like write a name on your mask, well, okay, you know, it's like there's not. A, yes, there's work to be done, but it's not exactly heavy lifting. I just want to ask for some feedback. It will help me with questions. So I want feedback on this question: Should the government give? Um, what's the word? What's the? I just lost it. Oh, should the you government know, give rebates, everybody free rebates. money? Rebates. Should the government give rebates towards air filtration? How would a question like that fit in in terms of what? Well, this is that, yeah, this is the wheelhouse thing again, because I posted in the chat, the government has done three things already, uh, maybe way more than three things. I don't understand what those three things are because it's, uh, what's that too long didn't read? I mean, it's like, and I'm, and I'm, not, a, I'm not a scientist. I mean, I, I can kind of, understand some of what I'm reading. I can get the gist of it, but I don't really know what the, the meat is on the bone so that we can actually like, no, you missed the whole point. That was on uh, OGM today about some, one of the, somebody posted something about uh, the way water goes into the, um, back into the, the ground and it holds 10 times, on, you know, carbon holds 10 times. Well, okay, I, I get the concept, I, I can't, regurgitate it out and sound like an intelligent human being. But I thought it was an awesome post. You know, I, I, I like put that in my reading list for later. You know, that was really good. But that's what I'm getting at. I, I don't understand what's already been done. All right. Well, I think we can close the call. I think Thanks we're everybody. good. Yeah, thank you very much. It's great.